Today, let us understand the embryological process of enamel formation and the cells that secrete the enamel are your ameloblasts and the process is called as amelogenesis. Before that, let us first run the intro. The process can be divided into three phases or stages. They are your pre-secretory stage that means what happens to these cells before they secrete and secondly the secretory stage indicating those cellular changes happening during the secretion and lastly the maturation stage representing the hardening of the partly mineralized enamel. The process can also be explained in something called as the life cycle stages of ameloblasts. There are totally six life cycle stages of the ameloblasts. They are your morphogenetic, organizing stage, formative stage, maturative stage, protective and your desmolytic stage. All these actually represent the morphological changes that the ameloblasts undergo during the whole process of amelogenesis. The first two stages comes under the pre-secretory stage of your amyloplast, amylogenesis process. Formative represents your secretory stage and the maturative and protective represents the maturative stage of the amylogenesis. Hmm. To understand the process of amylogenesis, let us go back to the early bell stage of your odontogenesis where the enamel organ kind of roughly resembles a bell-shaped structure and in that bell-shaped structure we can see the columnar inner enamel epithelial cells, cuboidal outer enamel epithelial cells, flat layered cells called a stratum intermedium and some stellate reticulum that is your star shaped cells. The underlying ectomysin chimal condensation representing your dental papilla has kind of increased its condensation from the previous uh, uh, stages of the odontogenesis so as with the condensation surrounding the enamel organ which we all refer to as the dental sac. Uh, the cells lining the concavity of the enamel organ at this stage are called as your inner enamel epithelial cells that actually differentiates to become your amyloblasts and that produces the enamel. But how does the differentiation of these cells occur? Mm, during the early bell stage, the inner enamel epithelial cells located at the future cusp tip stops its cell division to assume more of a differentiated role. When I say differentiated, the, mo the moment the cell stops its cell division, it is regarded as a differentiated cell. When I, say, when I say differentiated, I mean uh, the cell knows its function of producing the enamel matrix. However, this differentiation is dependent on the signals uh, and the interaction with the underlying dental papilla cells without which the differentiation is not possible. So this is called as a reciprocal induction. The moment one cell differentiates, its neighboring cell also follows the same. In this way, the differentiation process actually sweeps down until the differentiation process reaches the cervical loop area of the enamel organ. Because of this sweeping down process that actually occurs gradually and not abruptly, one can actually see already differentiated cell at the future cusp tip as well as numerous undifferentiated cell uh, near the cervical loop area. So the differentiation process actually sweeps down until it reaches the cervical loop area. Once the cell is differentiated, it starts producing the enamel matrix uh, the proteins called as amylogenins and non-amylogenins and this matrix is kind of partly mineralized that later goes on to get completely mineralized later during the maturity stages. For a complete understanding of the mineralization process, please check out my other video. The link of the same might pop up somewhere here. Uh, now let us see the life cycle stages of the amyloblasts in detail to understand the whole process, to understand the whole process of amylogenesis better. Uh, to begin with the first stage that is your morphogenetic stage. In this stage the cells are low columnar with a large oval with a large oval centrally placed nucleus kind of entirely filling up the entire cell body. The Golgi complex are located in the proximal end of the cell and the mitochondria are spread out evenly. Uh, during the transition from morphogenetic stage to the next stage the cell junctions also appear and these are called as the terminal bars and these appear near the proximal end when I say proximal it is towards the stratum intermedium along with the migration of the mitochondria towards the proximal portion of the cell before the mitochondria were evenly dispersed. 
Now, during the organizing stage, uh, uh, during this stage, the differentiating inner enamel epithelial cells change their shape. They kind of become more columnar, elongated, nucleus shifts towards the proximal end, towards the stratum intermedium and the Golgi complex moves towards the distal end. This process is termed as reverse polarization. By doing so, the cell is actually kind of preparing itself to produce the enamel matrix in its next stage. In this stage, the inner enamel epithelial cells provide an organizing influence to the underlying dental papilla cells that differentiates into odontoblasts and starts producing the dentin matrix. You can see the same in this picture uh, shown here. The material that is produced beneath the amyloblast is the first layer of dentin by the differentiated uh, odontoblasts. So the important thing you need to note here is the tissue that forms first is dentin and never enamel. And never ever forget this part, dentin always forms first. In the formative stage as such, as described before, the amyloblasts enter this stage after a, after a layer of dentin has been laid down in the underlying dental papilla. This is required for amyloblasts to start actually secreting the enamel matrix. As the cell is completely differentiated, now it starts secreting a layer of enamel immediately next to the mantle dentin forming the so-called as your uh, dentino enamel junction. At this point, we need to understand that the production of the enamel matrix occurs at only one side only by the distal portion of the cell body that is termed as your uh, the proximal tomes process. Uh, the enamel is this enamel is aprismatic in nature. When I say aprismatic, that means enamel is not composed of your typical rod and interrod pattern. Instead, it is just a layer of a compact calcium phosphate crystals. Once the initial layer of enamel forms, the cell, especially at its distalmost part of the cell, it develops a cytoplasmic extension. This is very important. The cell develops a cytoplasmic extension and this is called as the Tomes process. At this point, one can observe both the proximal and the distal junctional complexes being developed. Once the distal Tomes process develops, the production of the enamel matrix occurs in two sides. Firstly, the area around the distal junctional complexes, I mean from the proximal tomes process that actually produces the organic matrix that forms a pit surrounding the cell. Secondly, the distal extension of the tomes process being at an angle to the main cell body, it secretes the enamel matrix that in real sense actually fills the pit that was formed earlier. The material filling the pit forms your enamel rod and the materials surrounding these rods are your interrod. Again here you need to remember your interrod forms first before actually the rod. This process of rod and interrod pattern continues until sufficient thickness of the enamel forms. However, one should note that the amyloblast as it secretes the matrix it kind of retracts upwards. So you have a cell once it produces the enamel matrix it kind of retracts upwards uh, towards the stratum intermedium side, making space for the subsequent enamel matrix production. In this regard, the distal tomes process gets sequentially thinned out as it finally gets squeezed out of existence, leaving behind a thin narrow space uh, that is actually filled by your organic material subsequently and this is called as your rod sheet. The structure of enamel in, uh, in its rod and interrod pattern is totally a property of your tomes process. If there were no tomes process, no such architecture of a rod and interrod could be established. This is the reason why your first layer of enamel and the final layer of enamel does not contain the rod and interrod pattern. Now let's, let us go to maturative stage. In the maturative stage, once sufficient thickness of enamel is produced by the amyloblasts, the matrix is kind of already uniquely hard to about 30%. However, it gets more harder in its, matura in its maturative phases. In maturative stage, maturative stage actually occupies more time than all other stages put together. During maturation, the amyloblasts undergo a dramatic change called as modulation, where they show alternate rough and smooth distal ends that actually help mature the enamel matrix. It is observed that the each cycle of rough and smoothened amyloblasts lasts for about 8 hours and so you have 3 cycles in a day. The rough-ended amyloblasts have a tight distal junction and the smooth-ended amyloblasts have a leaky distal junction. This actually corresponds to the function that they are assigned for. Uh, the rough-ended cells have 
many degrading enzymes that are actually kind of released to break down the organic matrix into smaller peptide fragments that are later actually taken up by the smooth ended ameloblasts though, uh, uh, through their leaky distal junctions. The rough ended surface is further involved in kind of pumping the calcium and phosphate ions through the calcium ATPase, calcium binding protein making the 30% mineralized uh, to um, mineralized tissue to harder enamel. This process continues until most of the organic matrix and the water is kind of removed ultimately to comprise only 4% of the organic matrix in a matured enamel. Let's go to protective stage. Once the enamel gets completely mature, the newly formed enamel is protected by uh, the same cells that actually formed them. Uh, this ameloblasts undergo a drastic reduction in the height and the number uh, height and number and later they combine kind of they combine with the stratum intermedium and even the outer enamel epithelial cells to form something called as your reduced enamel epithelium. The combined cellular layers uh, uh, together secrete a basal lamina like material that actually gets firmly adherent to the newly formed enamel and protects the tooth until the tooth actually erupts and this is called as primary enamel cuticle. So I hope this video has helped you to get an insight into the process of amylogenesis. If you enjoy learning, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and do not forget to click the bell icon to get the notification of my next video and I'll see you again.